everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we're taking a look at our Synology disk station today because I want to talk about how you can sync the Synology disk station up with your Dropbox or Google Drive or other cloud account. It's a really uh, neat little system that they've worked in. It's even available on uh, these low-end ones that I have here. This is my uh, two-drive uh, Synology DS214 SE. Uh, in a prior review, we covered uh, their cloud station, which is basically its own, like, kind of roll-your-own Dropbox, uh, which works great. So check out my review of the DS214 SE to see how that works. Uh, in this one, we're looking at the ability to have the drive synchronize up with our Google Drive account, and it'll also work the same way with Dropbox and others. So basically a way to pull down uh, your cloud files onto your local storage and keep everything synchronized. So the way you get this working is in the Package Center. Uh, you want to look for an app called uh, Cloud Sync, which I already have installed here, but this is what the icon looks like. Uh, you can do a search up here and find it. And this is the, uh, basically the connector between uh, your, your Synology Drive and a whole bunch of online services. So once you have it installed, uh, what you do is you just uh, activate it through its little app picker here. And if you don't have anything synchronized, it's going to ask you which service you want to connect with. And the cool thing is you can use multiple services. So you have a choice of six. You've got uh, Google Drive, Dropbox, Baidu, OneDrive, Box, and Hubic. We're going to do Google Drive today. And we're going to connect to it. And uh, what it's going to do is if you're logged into your Google Drive account, it's going to send you over to Google real quick to give it permission to access those files. Uh, and then the Synology Sync will ask you if you want to connect your Synology Drive to those Google services, because it is a two-way flow of data, which we'll demonstrate in a minute. So we'll hit Agree here, and uh, that will get everything going. So once you connect the account, you then have to choose the folder you want to have synced. And I do recommend creating its own folder, because if you don't, uh, the contents of your Google Drive might get mixed in with a whole bunch of other stuff that you have in that drive share already. So uh, I usually just make a folder and call it Google Drive, uh, and that's what we're doing here. And we're going to connect uh, to that folder and hit Next. By the way, you can also select, um, after you select the location of the folder here, uh, you can also se select on the Google Drive or the Dropbox side uh, what files you want to bring down. Uh, and as you can see here, though, because most of us on Google Drive just kind of dump everything in, uh, it's going to take the root directory and just drag it all in. So I think you want to be careful, again, as to where you apply that folder. So we're going to hit Apply. And it is now uh, syncing up. And synchronizing is basically going to download everything on your Google Drive account uh, to your Synology disk station. I don't have too much on this account, so it went pretty quickly. And you'll see here it says updated three files. And if I go in and do a refresh of my Google Drive folder, unfortunately, you have to kind of navigate back to it. Uh, you will see now that we have uh, two files that were on our Google Drive, a little picture of a uh, Samsung Chromebook I reviewed a little ways back. And if I go to my Google Drive, of course, you can see that I have uh, those two files there as well. So now what we can do is create a folder here, and we're going to call this Test Folder. And when I create that folder in about, probably about 20 or 30 seconds or so, that will kind of stream down uh, into my Synology disk station. So it's always keeping itself up to date in the background. You don't have to really uh, do much to uh, keep these two things talking to each other. And what will happen is here we'll see a notification in a second that a folder was created, and it will then uh, create that folder on my uh, Synology uh, local file system, which it did. And now what we can do is go back to Google Drive, and maybe we'll upload a uh, file into that test folder. So we'll go in there, and I'm going to just uh, go to Upload. And I've got a file ready to go already called Upload Me. It's an easy, easy to remember thing for me to do. So we're going to upload that file. And it's gone into our Google Drive. And I'll click on it real quick so you can see what it is. It's a photograph uh, that some friends of mine took at the Orion launch a couple days ago. So then we'll uh, flip back over to our Synology Drive. You can see here it already grabbed that file off of Google Drive. And if I just navigate back into that folder, uh, you'll see now that we have that file locally. And uh, it is on our drive. And because that file now resides locally on my Synology Drive, I can grab it off of my network using any computer in the house. So uh, here we are just navigating to uh, the folder on my Mac. And there is the photo that I can see there. Now, I can also uh, stick a file from my local Mac into this as well. So I can create a quick little text file maybe. And we'll just say, hi, this is a test. And I will save this now uh, on my desktop and just drag it into I'll put in my downloads folder, be a little bit easier to find here. And we will just create it locally here and drop it back into that folder. So I'm going to close out of here. I'm going to copy it from my Mac uh, into that test folder. And now what we're going to do is go back to our Synology drive. Uh, if I just go and refresh the file, of course, we're going to see that we uploaded the text file there. And I can uh, double click on it or right click on it here and open it with the Synology text editor. And there we go. There's the text that we had. And then if I go to my Google drive, 
uh, we can just pop in here and see the file there as well. And then I can go back and edit the file on the Synology disk station directly. So I can go in here, uh, right click and open it with their text editor. And I'll say maybe uh, adding new text. I will then go ahead and save this and uh, close out of it. And now if I go back to my Mac and uh, pull up the file on the Mac, you will see that that text is now accessible, of course, because we are connected to the file on the Synology drive. And if I go back to my Google drive now, uh, first of all, we've got the notification that it was synced. Uh, go close out of here, uh, reopen it, and I should hopefully see uh, the text changes once they get in there. So let's go back in and maybe it takes a second for it to fully synchronize. So I'll wait a second for uh, things to catch up. And then we should be able to take a look at it again once the uh, drive or the file is uh, refreshed back to Google Drive. So sometimes you know, the changes don't often happen immediately, but uh, so you want to be careful not to have too many file collisions the more complex you make things. But as you can see now, the uh, file was uh, updated on the Google Drive side and uh, everything is in sync. Now I do have one caution with this in that it doesn't back up everything by default. It backs up specific file types and they include you know, pretty much the gamut of popular music video image and document formats. And it's doing it based on the file extension. Basically, you know, if you had a document called test, that test.txt, it looks at that txt and says, ah, that's a file that I am going to sync up with Google Drive. And by default, it excludes some, you know, some things like exe files. So executable software, um, .iso would be another example of a CD image or something like that. So within the Cloud Sync uh, options screen here, uh, there is a file filter and you can add those file types manually. So, you know, I'm thinking of like, you know, my QuickBooks file, which is a very specific file format. You want to make sure that that file format is included uh, in your file extension list. So, for example, if I wanted to add the star.iso, I would click add here and you can see it'll add it under customize and you want to make sure you have customize checked off to do that. The one thing you can't do, unfortunately, is a star.star .star to back up everything. It'd be great if they let you do that because I would like the option of just having everything sync up to the cloud, especially if I set up a specific account for acting as kind of a backup waypoint for me. Uh, so I wish they would add that and hope they will. Uh, but just keep that in mind because you want to make sure that the files that you're uh, anticipating to be on the cloud when you need them will be there and you really want to check before you do all this to get it up there. Now there are other options for backing these drives up and I think they're probably gearing this more as like a synchronization routine for uh, what you may already have in your cloud account. But again, just uh, uh, keep that in mind. And one thing I do like is that it doesn't sync up all of your Google Docs because if you've ever used the desktop client uh, for Google Drive, you'll know that it often wants to bring in like you know, hundreds of shortcuts for every Google document you've ever created. And I've got you know, probably eight or 10 years worth of uh, Google Drive documents of some sort or another in my uh, directory. And it would, it would just pull all of those down uh, when I first sync everything up. So thankfully that is off by default. Uh, but if you want those shortcuts, you can click that on uh, and get them as well. You also have a limit to uh, how big of a file you want it to have it synchronized. I think it's set right now. This looks like uh, uh, 10 gigabytes. Uh, is what it's set to right now. So you could uh, set this higher or lower depending on what you want to have sync or not. Sometimes those large files going back and forth frequently might uh, chew up your bandwidth. I think they're trying to find a reasonable limit, but you could always increase that number and uh, really include every file no matter what the size it is. So that is uh, how Cloud Sync works. A really neat little system for uh, keeping your Google Drive up to date. Basically, it's a client for uh, Google Drive, Dropbox, and others with your Synology disk station to make those files accessible to people that may not have uh, those clients installed on their machines, but they have access to your uh, drive here locally on your network or even synced up through their own cloud syncing thing that they have as well. So a lot of possibilities with this. I'd love to hear some of your ideas as to how you might want to use it. And I'm happy to try to answer some questions too. And maybe we'll find some uh, neat ideas for a future video as well. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching.